Finishing times for the second exam in my STA 3123 class are normally distributed. The second exam for STA 3123 has historically taken 86.56 minutes on average for students to complete. The standard deviation is 29.03 minutes. How long will it take the slowest 10% of the class to finish? Okay, so I've underlined two important key phrases here. First one is the phrase normally distributed. That tells us we can use the bell curve to solve the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the bell curve. using my little template I made here for the bell curve. Okay, so I've drawn my bell curve. I'm gonna go ahead and label the mean and the standard deviation. The mean is 86.56, the standard deviation is 29.03. And like always, we have a z-axis and an x-axis at the bottom. The z-axis is centered at zero. The x-axis will be centered at 86.56 minutes. Okay, fine. From there, what I want to do is look at the next key phrase. It says, how long will it take the slowest 10% of the class to finish? So if it asks us to find the probability in the problem, so what's the probability of you know, somebody taking, say, longer than 120 minutes? Now that's kind of the first type of problem we worked using the bell curves. But this is a different kind of problem because it doesn't say find the probability, it says how long. So it's looking for a time, looking, it's looking for a finishing time. That's the solution to the problem. All right, so when a problem does that, when it doesn't ask for probability, but it's still using the bell curve, and they're asking for something like a finishing time, and then they go on to talk about a percentile or a percentage, we know that we're going to use the table in reverse. So we're going to be going to the table to look up an area in order to find a z-score. That's kind of the opposite of what we did before. Before, we might be given a score like 120, so it might be a finishing time like 120. We then converted that 120 into a z-score, and then we went and looked up the z-score to find an area, and the area was our solution. That's not what we're doing in this problem. So when we have a problem like this where we're going backwards, we have to decide where we want to put a cut in the curve to separate sort of the slowest 10% of the class from the rest of the people. So let's think about it here. There's only two possible options. Either you put the cut in the curve, let's say here on the left, so that you separate 10% at the bottom from the remaining 90%, or you put the cut in the curve up here on the top so that you separate this kind of 10% chunk here from the remaining 90%. Only two possible options to do this problem. Let's think about it if we made the cut here. This 10% of the class, are these the people who finish in the slowest 10%? I don't think so, because what would happen, the number here, which would be the length of time that it took them to finish, would have to be something under 86.56. The average student takes 86.56. Let's say this number turned out to be 60 here. Well, that would mean they finished in about an hour or 60 minutes, and the rest of the class on average took about 86.56 minutes. These people wouldn't be the slowest 10%. percent it actually be the fastest 10%, right? So it makes sense then that we should put our cut, our slice in the curve, down here on the right. And then once we've done that, we're going to say, hey, look, this is going to represent the slowest 10%. And then we have to use just a little simple logic here to get the area in here. Our next step is to figure out the area that would be here. We're not going to look it up, we're just going to think about it logically and determine it. So what we're going to say is, look, if the whole half is 50% and this little tail is 10%, then this part here must be 40%. It must be 40 because the two chunks have to add to give you 50. So this must be 40. Now why do I even care about this area? What well, has to do with our chart, right? Our Z chart works in the way that you know, when we look at it, it gives us, you know, the area from the line we look up to the center. So if I want to know what z-score is associated with this spot on the curve, if I'm trying to figure that out, I know that that's going to be connected to the area from here to the center, because that's how my chart reads, right? So I need to make sure that I'm considering this area and not this one. So this area has a decimal is 0 0.4000. So my goal then is to try to find an area in my table that's the absolute closest to this number so that I can figure out the corresponding z-score. One thing I want to mention is that before you even go to the table, you should determine the sign of that z-score because that table is always going to give you positive z-scores. So you want to make sure your z-score should in fact be positive by figuring that up, out up front. If the z-score is centered at zero, then anything on the right is going to be positive. So we know that the z-score should be positive, and so that's okay. So let's try to figure out what area 
is closest to 40% and then find the corresponding z-score to that. So remember that for every z-score there's an associated area and for every area there's an associated z-score. So let's go to the table now and look up the 0 .4000 to try to find the corresponding z-score. Okay, so now we're looking in the body of the table to try to find an area and then figure out the corresponding z-score. The most efficient way to do this, in my opinion, is to look at the first column, look at the area there, and go down to see something as close as possible to the area you're looking for. So we're looking for 40% or 0 .4000. So I'm going to come down, I see 0, that's about 4, and then 8, then 12, then 15, so on and so forth. I'm going to go all the way down until I get to these two numbers. I see that uh, we have 38.49 and 40.32. That tells me that the number I'm looking for is probably in this row here that's next to 1.2. So I'm going to kind of block out the rest of that and then just look across till I see something near to 40%. So I see 38 38.7, 38.9, 39.07, 39.25, 39.44, 39.62, 39.8, 39.9, 9, 7. That's very close to the actual value we're looking for. And then I see 0 0.4015. Now 0 0.4015 is higher than what we're looking for. That's okay. We can go over. That's not a problem. We actually just want to figure out which number is closest. So we have the one that's below and we have the one that's above. Which one is actually closest? Well, you'll see that this is three ten thousandths away from 0 0.400, where this value here is actually 15 ten thousandths away. So I'm going to say that this one is closest. And that z-score that corresponds to that area, which is closest to 40%, is 1.28. 1.28. So that's the z-score we'll use in our problem. Okay, so the z-score associated with this area, or the closest z-score to this area, seems to be 1.28. 1.28. Now, from that z-score, we want to figure out the finishing time, right? So we have the z-score for the finishing time, but in order to fin finish the final part of the problem, we need to know what's the finishing time associated to that z-score. Well, if you remember before, when we started out with the value here, we converted it into a z-score, we used the z-score formula, right? We use this formula z is equal to x minus the mean over sigma. If we do a little algebra on this, we can multiply both sides by sigma. We end up with z sigma is equal to x minus the mean. And if we're solving for x, we can add mu to both sides. And when we're finally done, we get this statement. We get the idea that the mean plus z sigma is equal to x. So if I want to know what the corresponding finishing time, or x value is, all I have to do is to plug in that z-score we have, this mean and this standard deviation, and we'll end up with the proper finishing time. So the mean is 86.56 plus the z-score. The z-score we just said was 1.28, right? We just found that. And then the standard deviation was given as 29.03. Let's enter those things into the calculator to see what we get. Okay, so 86.56 plus 1.28 times 29.03. When we do all that, we get a total of 123.7. 123.7. 123.7. Okay, so that's the finishing time here. 123.7. It actually goes out to 72 if you want to keep two decimal places there. So that's basically like 124 minutes, so a little more than two hours. That would be the cutoff line for the slowest 10% and the remaining 90% of the students. So if you take longer than 123.72 minutes to finish the exam, you're going to be in the slowest 10% of the class at that point.